welcome to a cook back in time. Today we're in the peaceful town of Folkestone, high up on the East Cliff, for a dramatic reenactment of the Battle of Lapis Tituli, which took place in the year 465. Between the 4th and 5th centuries, the Roman Empire, which covered most of what is now Europe and the Middle East, was in serious decline. In this far-flung corner of the empire, the Roman Britons were left to defend themselves against the invading barbarian hordes of Saxons. In 409, Britons revolted against the bankrupt Roman administration and from then on ruled themselves in much the same way the Romans had, successfully rebuffing the Saxons for another 70 years until 480, when the whole of the east of England was invaded and became the kingdom of South Saxon, Sussex. But the legacy of Roman rule lived on in the many technological advancements they left behind. And the idea of cooking in a separate room on a purpose-built waste-level platform is one that's remained unchanged until this day. By moving cooking and food preparation away from a smoky wood fire in the centre of the house and using clean burning charcoal in a well-ventilated kitchen, Roman cooking became precise and consistent, and so their recipes became more and more elaborate. Today, our expert guest chef and historic cookbook author Sally Granger will be setting up her Roman kitchen to create some Roman rations, sourdough bread, stuffed kidneys, a sweet honey nut omelette and Liebum cake to feed the hungry troops of Britannia, a Dark Ages reenactment society who are here to recreate a battle that took place 1500 years ago. Sally, were you trained as a professional cook? I was, yes, for, for about tw 20 years as I wor worked as a chef but I got a little bit bored with it. I was working at the top of my field as a pastry chef and I was still bored, so I went back to university and did a degree in ancient history. Why? Why? I, Claudius, I think. Do you remember that? Yes. I read the books by Robert Graves and, and got fascinated in the ancient world. I met people who were equally so. You want to put your hand here? What, what we're, burn. we're demonstrating Roman techniques and I'm offering food for people to taste. That is the key to what, what, what we do. It's freshly cooked and people stand around and watch the whole process going through and then they can say, yes, they can taste it. When you find somebody who's, who has something to give me as well, they could, oh, I've been to Greece and I've seen this being done in this way and then I can take them aside and tell me more. I want the address of the person you met. Uh, and so I'm learning all the time, but I love talking to people. I didn't think I would when I first started it, but it's become a joy. Authentic is this cooking arrangement? Well, it's it's a barbecue platform, as you can see. It would have been made of masonry, a solid structure, as I've hoped I've conveyed at the front. But mine is actually MDF and a sheet steel top. The, the actual um, level that w at which you cook would have been terracotta stones mm -hmm. to hold the heat. And of course, the sheet steel does not hold that much heat, which is the one disadvantage of it. But apart from that, it's um, it's a barbecue. Sally, I love the pots. Aren't they wonderful? They must be based on authentic They ones. are called Clibanus or Testum, depending on whether you are fashionable and you want to use the Greek term or, or use the Latin term. They are small portable ovens. They remind me of today's um, crocs. Exactly, the terracotta yes. crocs. This one is actually very hot now. I've been heating it through, but if I lift it up for you, you will see what kind of it, what, what it's like inside. And it's, it's getting fiercely hot. It is. When I'm ready, it'll come aside, so will the trivet, so will the fire. And the meat, the bread, the cake will go directly onto the hearth, the pot over the, over the bread, and the fire literally sits on the flange. That's what the flange is for. And you get a wonderful bake loaf. Well, what are you going to cook for us first? We're going to start with some bread, a sourdough bread. So this is my sourdough culture. It's actually wild yeast and bacteria to leaven bread, as opposed to the whole concept of compressed yeast today, which is to totally alien. Um, it's wild because it is, it is the, the uh, yeast and bacteria in the air and in, in the wheat. Now this is warmed water with a little salt. Uh -huh. Because salt is very impor important in bread. Um, and that hot water will now give it a really good boost of extra um, heat, which will get the yeast going. You've got two lots of flour. Why, Sally? Now, I'm, I'm making a semi-wholemeal. I'm using spelt flour, which is, the, which is the grain that the Romans would have known and grew. It's very primitive, mm. um, not a high yield, but will grow anywhere, which is the key. And it's got a wonderful nutty flavour. 
Now I'm going to add, the recipe states about three cups, but we'll just, we'll just. Well, you've been making it so yes. you know exactly how much you I'm need just to waiting, I'm, I'm just looking for the right consistency and I will add a little more white flour. The Romans wanted white bread, just like we want white bread. It's much nicer for them, but it's hard to achieve. It takes an awful lot of effort and an awful lot of wastage. But everything goes round in circles because we're all eating the whole meal in the granary exactly, and exactly, everything these exactly, days and yes. turning our noses up at the yes. um, But we the still white. want it light. We still want it full of air yes. and nicely textured. Yes. Take the spoon away because after a point it becomes superfluous and you get and your hand in. Old hands. And then I'm going to transfer it to my rather wonderful kneading trough. Would the Romans have got down on their hands and knees and done this? I think so. I think so, very much so. Yes, even, even for bulk production of bread, I think the only way to knead it is by hand. It's a slave task, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's one of those jobs, anything unpleasant and hard, there's almost certainly going to be a slave involved. Oh, I see. So, so it would have been the underling in the kitchen who'd have done this? Exactly, How yeah. long for? Well, I'm going to do it for about 10 minutes because it's a sourdough. It's actually, um, it doesn't need um, an awful lot. Sometimes I've... I read 20 minutes, but that really does take, take effort. And they have to be left to prove for uh, how long? It won't be long, actually, because of the sourdough. It'll be about half an hour at the most. I've took the bread with some bay leaves on there, flop it down onto the hearth, and cover it up with the oven. Right, we're going to start with the stuffing for the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Stuffed kidneys, one of my favourite Roman dishes. A um, number of people that hate kidneys have actually told me that they like them now because of this recipe, so I'm very pleased. We start with a little bit of pepper. So if I leave you to... Uh, you have to bash each individual yeah. pepper. Right. Pe and I am going to take the fennel and, and roast it. Just add a little bit of heat to the fennel so that um, it brings out the flavour. If I, add, if I add those now... Do I grind can... those as well? Yes, please. They smell good. I've never... Um, Fennel seeds. Beautiful. It's, they're difficult to grind down. Now, this is f fresh coriander. Very fashionable nowadays, yes, of course. Yes, And the mortaria is so efficient, I have to tell you, that you can use the stalks on fresh coriander mm -hmm. without any problem. I just need to ch chop it up a little bit. And then we add our fresh coriander. I'm going to start again, and this is the process I find fascinating. You see mm. how quickly, you see how quickly it goes yes. to a paste. Now, at this stage, I will add my pine kernels so that I've got them both together being pounded. There's an awful lot of oil in pine kernels, and that's what we want to bring out. It looks like pesto sauce. Doesn't it? Yes. Now, I think at that stage, yes. we can say we can say we're ready. You see how much, how glossy it is now with it's all the lovely. oil? I think we'll stop there and we'll move on to the kidneys, which need to be prepared. You just need to take away the sinew. Mm -hmm. And then we we'll take a little bit of stuffing, make it into a sausage, and lay it down, and fold the meat over. And then we use cool fat, the most incredible ingredient. It holds all the intestines together in one place. Yep. <laughs> And uh, we all have it. Uh, if you um, if you buy faggots yes. at a butcher that makes his own, then yeah. you will find cool fat. Oh. Or, or or a butcher that makes his own s sausages, he might have some. Right. So that is ready to go in the frying pan. Uh huh. So we need some oil. Olive you know, oil, I presume. Olive oil, yes, of course. And we're going to fry off our kidneys. Just just seal them and then finish them off in the oven. My frying pan is a new acquisition. It's beautiful. It has a handle which folds away. Is that Roman? That's most definitely Roman. That was you, you, really? Yes. That was... Um, Travelling? Yes. Pro probably military. And why the um, well, sort of conical shape? Um, I think probably for making sauces afterwards. You were able to pour out afterwards. I mean, it's, it's quite commonly seen now. Right. We're now going to transfer our kidneys to our roasting dish. I'm going to roast them, but I'm going to roast them over the fire. Now, this particular pot is, is, is a very coarse sandstone, and it will take the heat. So it stands over the coals, mm -hmm. and the hot oven here 
stands over the pot. How long do we need that to, to cook? I would say about 20 minutes. Join us after the break when our chef Sally Granger makes an omelette with a difference, when Dan puts his troops through their paces in Latin, and the survivors tell us what they think of Roman grub. Welcome back. Well, I'm in sort of no man's land between the Romano Britons and the Saxons. They're going to have a scrap later. It's called the Battle of Lapis Tituli. But first of all, I'm going to go and speak to their commanders about their influence upon our culture. Dan, tell us about Britannia. What is it? Uh, Britannia is a society that sort of really plugs a gap in history um, in terms of the reenactment and research that actually goes out to the public. We do the period from about 350 AD to about 600 AD. You, you've been in films, haven't you? Not just you personally, but your, the your club, group, yes, your yes, society. Britannia, yes. uh, we started our first ever film was Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And, uh, <laughs> that's right. We, we played the bad guys in that. And then uh, recently, the icing on the cake for us was. Uh, to take part in the opening battle scene of Ridley Scott's Gladiator, which we were delighted to be involved in. Well, I'm aware that I'm ignoring your yes, foe uh, the over Saxon, here. Yes, yeah, the Saxon, yes, the leader of the opposition. Uh, so it's yeah, great. so you're Antoninus? <laughs> Antoninus would have been uh, um, essentially the Romanized version of my name, Antony. And you're a Saxon? I'm actually a Saxon. I'm portraying, hopefully, um, an early Saxon by the name of Hengist, who would have um, invaded these shores. He was invited over by the Romans as Federati, essentially mercenaries, mm -hmm. um, to basically keep the northern tribes out um, from Scotland, the Picti. And uh, what they were, would have done, would have, they would have been under the employ of Rome, they would have uh, settled here, they would have been you know, treated as uh, mercenaries. And then when the pay ran out, they said, enough's enough, we'll have this, thank you very much. And that's essentially what happened. Now in the battle this afternoon, are you just going at each other hell for leather, or are you demonstrating for the public what would have happened, different moves and things? We, are, we, we, we tend to vary it, don't we? I mean, we tend to vary it. We, yeah. we try and stick to the tactics that would have been used at the time, and uh, we're all very well trained. We, uh, we're sort of like reproducing, the, if you like, the martial arts of the time, um, how, how the warriors would have fought, how the warriors would have trained, their attitudes, um, and obviously by using the tactics of the time, you sort of almost get into the mindset of the people. So, chaps, who wins today? In the actual battle, we'll be reacting something. I believe the Romans will be winning. But um, okay. I'm hoping to change that term events. <laughs> right. But it isn't all battles, is it? Britannia does a lot of other things as well. No, there's a lot of aspects to um, ancient life that we like, we, we like to show. There's a lot of crafts that we like to show as well. And also, we, we tend to sort of, we've got a fair amount of market stores and we tend to show people that are importing pottery and things like that. It's a huge gathering around your cook's stall. There always is. And we don't get a look in. Um, there's these wonderful <laughs> ah. smells of herbs and garlic that sort of go around the cabinet. Listen, if you're yeah. good chaps, you don't yeah. kill each other this afternoon. Yeah. Yes. Would you actually like to come and partake of some really good food? Well, we promise to behave. As okay. long as we behave. Right. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Now we come to, I presume it's a dessert. A dessert, it? yes, a patina. It's either an omelette or a quiche without the pastry lining. Yeah. It's difficult to know exactly. But a patina was something that had eggs, but it could be sweet or sour, savoury or fish, or meat, um, and it was always served as a, um, a third course, i.e. the sweet course, mm -hmm. which had savoury things just like they do today. Um, we start with long pepper and ordinary pepper. Now long pepper was, was known to the Romans and particularly treasured. It was very much more expensive. Uh, it's very odd looking. It smells sweet in fact. Have a smell. It's 
It's more nutmeg. -y. Nutmeg, -y, yes, it's odd. So we're going to start with probably one, mm -hmm. which I would like you to. Right. And we're going to try a little bit of ordinary pepper as well because we want some heat. Because heat, heat with sweet things is good, particularly with honey, which is what we're. Well, we have raspberries with black pepper on. Exactly. If we fancy. So, now, do I bang these like I did the other? Yes. Or can yes. I do them your I, way? I would bang them first. Right. Just to be sure. I hope I don't lose them if they're that expensive. Not to worry. And then, while you're doing that, I'm going to roast some nuts. Or dry roast is the term. Um, as we did the spices. And that's just to give them a little bit of colour. And some pine kernels too. And that's just, just to give them a little bit of colour. And I think we will go with these. We'll go in and we'll start to pound. That's great. You can see all the, the oil yes, and the almonds I can coming it. out. I can yes. feel it. Okay, now we're going to add some eggs. Mm -hmm. Two eggs. Which Would I they have been a lot smaller in Roman times? They certainly used lots of different types of egg. Yeah. Um, quail's eggs we know about, for instance. Yes. Now, if I, if I use the spoon and I... Yes, I it is all getting a bit stuck around the edges. Stuck around. Lovely yellow eggs, which is nice. And I'm also going to give you honey. Yes. We're going to add the fish sauce and we're going to add some wine. If you move your arm to one side so I don't want to get honey on your sleeve. There we go. And the fish sauce. Right, but you need a substantial amount, I find. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've had our fish sauce. Now we had our we had some milk. Mm -hmm. Just a touch of milk. I I go by a couple of tablespoons of each, quite frankly. You're a That's typical you cook. Need. You can just do it, can't just you? Do it. Just do and it. And we add the wine, of course. Wine? Wine. Yes. Now, the Romans cooked with wine all the time. They very rarely cooked with water, or at least the wealthy ones Oh, didn't. lovely. <laughs> so all the stews are very rich and intense. Yes. So a couple of tablespoons again. And that is our mixture ready to go. It looks very thin, Sally. Mm. Very, very thin. Mm. And it's going to... Thicken up into a sort oh, it'll, of little omelette quiche thing, yes. And this is when the little the little lip on the mortaria is useful. This is called a patina. A patina was, was the name of the dish and also the name of the container the dish was cooked in. There we go. Now, we're going to put our oven on the top of it, so we need to jiggle a little because... Can I a, push a, it, a, a, Yes, it may be too hot, is it too hot? No, no, no. I've got fairly asbestos fingers, there you are. There we go, excellent. And of course, this one actually sits nicely, nice and flush on the top. Yes. And how long does that one take to cook? Oh, uh, this is the kind of one where I would actually have a look two or three times, and I wouldn't tell you how long it took until it was finished. <laughs> it would give me an idea, <laughs> 10 minutes, 20 minutes, minutes, half an hour? Uh, uh, probably more like 20 to half an hour. We're going to make a sacrificial cake. It's called a liber, uh, which is a honey cake, honey cheesecake. The Romans made these to put on the altar to their loved ones. But you're using very modern day ricotta cheese. I am. We know that they used uh, the hard sh sh sheep's cheese, mm -hmm. which we would equate with Pecorino Romano. It's a bit like Parmesan. One of the byproducts of that now is ricotta. So we start with um, our ricotta. We add an egg, one egg. And we mix the two together. So now, fully mixed up, we then add, and I've, I've never actually weighed this, I should, I know, two handfuls of flour. I would say roughly about four ounces, but it's probably more like three. Two handfuls of flour, mix the two together. The secret is to handle it as little as possible. It is supposed to be, it's almost like a cheese souffle. Mm. And the flour is simply there to bind the cheese. So when it's mixed in, I then bind it into a ball. Now, honey cheesecakes were very common in temples. Here, I think, in, in, in Britain too, but specifically in Rome. There's a beautiful story from Marshall, the poet Marshall, of a runaway slave who, when captured, actually says, I, I couldn't stand eating honey cakes. I wanted bread. I was fed up of eating honey cake. And because everybody brought their stale old honey cakes oh, I see. <laughs> to offer to the gods, they weren't eaten, they weren't meant to be eaten. <laughs> and, and so the poor old slave, that's all he had to eat. Oh. I felt quite sorry for him. He just wanted some bread. Oh, oh that's dear. a lovely story. Isn't it nice? Yes. Right, so it's, it's now loosened. So now I take it out and I put some bay leaves on the bottom. Now this gives flavour and they protect it from the hearth because I'm putting it directly on the hearth. Pop it down. 
pick up the test them and cover it up. And how long will that take? 25, 30 minutes. There we go. Oh, wow. Well, I'm pleased with that. That's a lovely colour, isn't oh, it? Oh, it looks excellent. I can smell it. It has the appearance of a souffle, I find, when yes. it comes out like this. It's really it wonderfully, like one too. really wonderfully squidgy, and you Ooh. need to cut into it. And you see the texture. It's a wonderful texture. That's exactly what I wanted it to be like. And I basically I put put a cross on it, and then with the cross, and you smother it with honey. Well, chaps, you're both still alive after the battle, and we did promise you some food. Well, our wonderful cook here, Sally, will you explain what they're going to have? Well done. You have stuffed kidneys with pine kernels, coriander, fennel seed, and pepper. Well, I'll try one. So dig in. Yes, please do. Would you like some wine? Yes, please. Yes. We have a spelt loaf as well. What's in the bread? That's spelt flour, which is the ancient wheat that the Romans knew. And we have a pudding, which is um, a patina, or a, or a quiche without the pastry, or an omelette, depending on how you want to define it. Um, really like a, a sweet custard. Can I try it? Please do. Use a spoon. The only time, of course, when the Romans did use utensils. With dessert? With dessert. Mm. Actually, it's an unusual. That? Unusual combination of flavours. Yes, it, it works, though. This is the honey cake, mm. which needs to be eaten with your fingers, so dig in. Very sticky. Sounds like my sort of food, actually. Mmm. Now that is beautiful. Mm. Mm. That is really nice. That is wonderful. Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, they say an army marches on its stomach. This lot aren't going anywhere. <laughs> I do hope you've enjoyed our Roman barbecue cooking and that you'll join us again soon for another Cook Back in Time. <laughs>